Hi, how are you? Well, what I find amazing is that out of 318 million people in the United States, we come up with only 8 or 12 people who find themselves the cream of the crop running for president of this great country. And what I find confusing is that no matter who finds themselves in the peculiar position of running as president, the rest of the 318 million people find reasons why their choice among those 8 to 12 people is completely capable of being president, and the other 7 to 12 remaining candidates are considered terrible individuals who should not have thrown their hat in the ring in the first place. Now, don't look up my voting record because it would give you reason to find me suspect of using wisdom behind my comments. Because I am one of the small percentages of the 318 million people who like to waffle back and forth, I'm swayed by today's public opinion, or today's headlines, and the comments made by candidates, influenced by my own personal opinions, yet easily brainwashed to reverse my opinion at will. After all, that is my constitutional right, to change my mind at will. The most ludicrous philosophy, however, is this political party issue that we actually have people in America who believe, the politicians included, that you should go in and just check Republican or Democrat or Independent or whatever party is on the ballot and then, thank the Lord, everything will be okay. So here's what I think. I think we should do everything that everyone suggests. I think it'll work. Doing everything, pleasing everybody. Let the melting pot of American thought boil over. First, let's all get together in one huge room and decide who amongst us should be our leader. Now, in that room, there will be the peaceniks who want everyone to just get along float downstream, if you will. Next to them will be the gunslingers, who not only need to have weapons to defend themselves, but feel the need to defend the peaceniks, who, in their great wisdom, are sitting very near the gunslingers, because peaceniks aren't stupid. And very near the peaceniks would be the outlaw all-guns advocates, who, because they aren't stupid either, sit within shooting range of the gunslingers, although the outlaw all guns advocates don't believe the gunslingers will be needed. Next to them would be one person from each race, color, religion, politics, mindset, etc. Now none of those people would be allowed to do or say much. They could certainly have no weapons. They wouldn't be allowed to actually support any one person as their candidate because it would cause a stir among us and they would be accused of prejudice or profiling or haters of humanity for not choosing someone else's candidate. And they might want to blame everyone else for their position at the table, this huge table that would not be confused as a banqueting table, including trying to start a grassroots movement to be moved to a place closer to, oh, let's say, the gunslingers. And of course, there would be no need for law enforcement, too expensive for one, but also because this whole process is the American way and Americans don't need laws. The gunslingers can take the law into their own hands if necessary, right? And while we're discussing the American way, I forgot to mention that no one is allowed to bring their wallets to this meeting, this election, because money can't buy love and we should love our president, right? I would be the first speaker, by the way. After all, this was my idea. My opening remarks would be a three-hour discourse on animal protection, human rights, homelessness and hunger, cancer research, and protecting our farms and forests, because by God, those are the real issues. In the fourth hour of my speech, however, while everyone is enjoying a dessert from every country in the world, I would do my best to introduce the person who would be president. I will make sure that everyone knows that, although they unanimously agreed upon this individual, they shouldn't think for a minute that this love fest is the way it's going to be outside once this party is over. Yeah, I'm really going to bum everybody out. With their bellies full, 
their consciences as seared as the main entree, they will leave, one by one, through the front doors, and find that during the long debate and festival inside, the world was at war. How could that happen, they wonder. They were so sure that everyone in the world was in the room. The room they created from their own thoughts. The room that they had convinced themselves was the right room. The room where they were right and everyone else was wrong. The room where they will do their best to get back into, but as they turn, find that there never was a door, never was a room. Why have I not mentioned religion? Well, that's a simple answer. Because in the end, the room will be left empty. Echoes of the war still quietly ringing outside as the religion most capable of sustaining itself through war and prejudice begins to rebuild a once free and independent republic incapable of escaping the ultimate truth that the God of the universe keeps saying, y'all just can't figure out how to get along. Finally, please don't ask me who the God of the universe is. It will just start another war. But I know.